Number 15. Pennywise can make you forget. The people of Derry mysteriously forget all about the unsolved missing children cases that have occurred in the small town. A bit odd, isn't it? You would think if one child was taken in a town as small as this one, the terror would unfold in the face of it, and it would be the talk of the town for years. But not in Derry. This isn't because the townspeople are cruel and heartless, nor is it because they've become desensitized to the events because of their regularity. No, it's because Pennywise has control over the entire town of Derry. Through subliminal influence and other actions, it is able to mold the minds of the adults in Derry, making them forget monstrous misdeeds or pretend like nothing evil ever happened there. But we all know differently. Number 14. Pennywise's backstory is bizarre. In developing the character of Pennywise, Stephen King's goal must have been to create something that was as mysterious as possible. Not only is the monster itself an enigma, it's actually not of this world at all. The character's history is one of the most bizarre of any Stephen King character ever written, and that's saying something. Pennywise, or It, was born of another dimension called the Macroverse, the existential space that encompassed all things before the Big Bang created the universe. If the monster comes from another dimension, how did it arrive on Earth? Well, he arrived in the location of Derry, the town he resides in throughout the novel, about a million years ago. He landed there like an asteroid, but was not immediately active. In fact, the monster did not haunt dreams for centuries. Instead, it hibernated until the fateful year of 1715, when a deep dark hunger awoke him. It smelled people in the air and decided to feed off their fears. The monster started to appear to the town's people and wreak havoc in Derry. Once it was full, which usually took about two years of feeding, it went back to sleep and hibernated for 30 odd years. After its first appearance, it arrived in town every three decades to feed again. In doing so, it would salt the meat by invoking fear in its victims. Number 13. It's a shapeshifter. Most people who haven't read the book or have seen the miniseries probably think that Pennywise holds a single form, that of a clown. The monster is a shapeshifter and shifts into shape that its victim fears the most. In the case of some, a clown works wonders. However, for others who are afraid of, say, spiders or sharks or leeches, insects or other animals or creatures of any kind, it knows what you fear and it becomes that fear incarnate. In both the book and the miniseries, this shape-shifting ability has made for some of the most frightening literary experiences any reader has read or horror movie watcher has seen. A run-through of some of the shapes it has shifted into. Pennywise, of course, is one of the creature's favorite forms to shape-shift into, and it's easier to lure and hunt children as a dancing clown. And as children are the easiest humans to frighten, they are among its favorite prey. One of the loser's classmates, Eddie Corcoran, experiences it as a reanimated being of one of his relatives, as well as the creature from the Black Lagoon. Bill, one of the members of the loser's club, sees it as his little brother, Georgie, who passes early in the book because of Pennywise. It uses the voices of past victims to taunt surviving family members via whispers from the storm drains. Additionally, it appears as a giant bird, a werewolf, a leper, a mummy, the eye, one of the kid's fathers, a swarm of piranhas, a swarm of flying leeches, the shark from Jaws, Dracula, the Paul Bunyan Station, also known as the Giant, Frankenstein's Monster, a Doberman Pinscher, a Head, the Hansel and Gretel Witch, a Zombie, and the Giant Spider. It can manage to shapeshift into anything your heart most fears. Number 12. Pennywise appears in other Stephen King novels. Even if you haven't seen the miniseries or read the book, I'm sure you all thought that Pennywise passed in the end, didn't you? Because it sure does look like a happy ending for the Losers Club. If so, you aren't a true Stephen King fan. The spine-tingling character appears in more novels than just it, Stephen King's 1987 book, The Tommyknockers, is similar to It, in that something mysterious is haunting a town in Maine. The mystery in Tommyknockers lurks in the woods, however, rather than in a storm drain. 
Though Stephen King has deemed it an awful book, he did manage to drop a Pennywise cameo in there. The book follows a character who travels through Derry, Maine. The character spies a clown, likely Pennywise, in a storm drain in the town. In another of King's novels, Dreamcatcher, Mr. Gray sees graffiti that states ominously, Pennywise lives. The name Mr. Gray is one of the names it adopts. The frightening clown also appears in 112263, Insomnia, and Gray Matter. While some of these may simply be a coincidence, the repeated appearances do seem to indicate that the Losers Club didn't destroy it after all. Number 11. Pennywise must follow the laws of nature. Although it is an ambiguous amorphous monster, it cannot walk through walls. That is, unless the shape it shifts into grants those laws of nature. Yes, it is not impractical. The monster must follow the laws of nature that its shape takes. For instance, if it takes the shape of a ghost, the monster will be transparent and surrender to the laws of a ghost, whatever those are. If it appears as Dracula, it could be destroyed by a wooden stake through the heart. If it appears as a zombie, it could be destroyed by damaging the brain. If it appears as a werewolf, which the monster actually does in King's novel, its weakness would be silver. The point is, although it may seem invincible, the laws of nature rule him once he shapeshifts, as they do us. Number 10. Pennywise the Clown is the most powerful of shapeshifts for most viewers. Stephen King knows what frightens us. In fact, he said in an interview with Conan O'Brien that he specifically chose the image of a clown because clowns frighten children more than anything. They do have that kind of monstrous thing going for them, he said. The new It is set to be even more chilling, and Muschietti plays on the reasons why Pennywise is especially frightening to people. In an interview with Muschietti in USA Today, the director noted, it's established that Pennywise takes the shape of your worst fear. He doesn't have a steady behavior. He doesn't expose how he thinks, and that makes him really unpredictable. To put it simply, ambiguity and unpredictability results in fear. This is where Pennywise's power lies. In fact, this fear of clowns, cholerophobia, has some psychological basis. A clown is amorphous. He's got human-like features, but they are exaggerated. Research has shown that this is what scares people about clowns. The features that are nearly human, but not quite. As the brain tries to identify the features with what it's already cognitively established as normal, the pattern is not completely recognized, and it confuses the brain. This results in fear. Even worse, a clown's behavior is a bit unpredictable, and that's what psychology says we fear the most, when we don't know what to expect next. Very unsettling. Number 9. Stephen King created the character based on experience. King may even be cholerophobic himself, based on his own personal experience with Ronald McDonald. Mind you, King wasn't even a child when he crossed paths with Mr. McDonald on a first-class flight. King was seated next to the clown, who completely out of character ordered a gin and tonic, lit up a cigarette on a flight, so this must have been ages ago, and started to chat with King. He said he had come from McDonald land, where that is, only Ronald knows. The clown also told the famous writer that he was headed to New England to attend a McDonald's opening. Although the clown certainly didn't do anything the real Pennywise would have done, the impression stuck with him, and he turned it into art. Number 8. Pennywise inspired some of King's regular future themes. Pennywise really was the foundation upon which King built. Some of his major themes were based in the creature of It. For instance, the power of memory is strong in It and is reoccurring in future King novels. King often delves into his characters' memories to pull fear from them, making the memory a manifestation of what haunts his characters. In It, for example, as previously mentioned, one of the Loser Club characters, Bill, remembers his younger brother, Georgie. The memory of his brutal slaying haunts the older brother. And Georgie is what it appears as to Bill. Tying in with that, childhood trauma is another King staple. It appears in future books like The Regulator and Dreamcatcher. Of course, in It, the Loser's Club is made up of children who certainly are traumatized throughout the novel, which affects them for the rest of their lives. A third lasting theme found in It and reoccurring throughout King novels is the darkness hidden beneath the facade of traditional small-town values. 
This theme recurs in novels like Needful Things and Black House. King likely wants to hit home that no matter what humanity claims to be, no matter what values they uphold, the darkness is there, the evil is there, the fear is there, and this is where it lives inside us all. Number 7. Courage and heart will defeat it. No matter how intimidating it can be, good will always conquer evil. And the good in King's novel have two traits according to the ritual of Chud, courage and heart. With these two traits, you can defeat Pennywise, or whatever shape it shifts into, to capitalize on your fear. Courage and heart are its weaknesses, and the loser club's strength. Number 6. Pennywise is based on a real clown. Pennywise's story, a clown that slays people, may sound familiar, and that's because it is. John Wayne Gacy is the real-life inspiration behind Pennywise. Gacy was actively taking lives in the 1970s. Although he wasn't certainly of it caliber or substance, and definitely couldn't shapeshift, Gacy did serve as Pogo the Clown for children's parades and parties. He did so for charity, when it was found that 33 or more met their end by the charitable clown's hand. Number 5. Pennywise is making it hard to be a clown. Have you ever wondered what a clown's life is like? Well, after it was written, read, and or reviewed by millions, clowns have been having a bad day. After the most recent remake of King's Horror Story, real-life clowns have had a hard time paying rent. Many people have been bypassing clowns at their birthday parties for less frightening alternatives. The Hollywood Reporter has noted that this is due to the miniseries and the new movie associating clowns with fear. The remake is not to blame completely. Another more recent pop culture series, American Horror Story, pushed a creepy clown to the forefront, who is slated to recur in the new cult season of the show. It also certainly didn't help that clowns kept popping up in forests and other dark and frightening places last year around Halloween to turn the nation's collective stomach and traumatize us anew. Pam Moody, the president of the World Clown Association, yes, that's a real thing, is worried about this pop culture trend that paints clowns as evil. Those who make a living clowning around are losing jobs and taking names, while the children who enjoy clowns are losing out on fun educational opportunities. For instance, Moody's character, Sparky the Firefighter Clown, educates children about fire safety. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Moody said, People had school shows and library shows that were cancelled. That's very unfortunate. The very public we're trying to deliver positive and important messages to aren't getting them. Moody notes that Pennywise has nothing to do with real-life clowns, their intentions, and their goals. It all started with the original It, she said. That introduced the concept of this character. It's a science fiction character. It's not a clown, and has nothing to do with professional clowning. For those who still like a good clown, ignore all the It hype and go out and support your local clown community. Number 4. Pennywise Shaped a Generation's Fears While the fictional character It is a shapeshifter, the reality is that Pennywise the Dancing Clown shaped the fears of a whole generation. When Pennywise first appeared on the small screen in the Tommy Lee Wallace miniseries adaptation of King's novel, those who were already suspicious of clowns had their suspicions validated while those who would never suspect them were sure to hold them at arm's length after their first viewing. The newest adaptation will see the director, Andy Muschietti, will try and reinvent Pennywise to frighten a whole new generation. In an interview with SFX magazine, Muschietti said most of his inspiration for this will come from King's novel rather than the original miniseries. As most people who grew up in Generation Y can attest, if Muschietti does Pennywise right, which judging from the previews looks like he has, Generation Z and Alpha are unlikely to get the new film's iconic scenes out of their heads either. Soon all generations will be colrophobic. Number 3. Pennywise's true form is nothing as it appears. You might be wondering what it is when it's not becoming fears. One might ask, is its true form a clown? Is it a spider? Does it even have a true form? Remember the monster's strange history and backstory. It was born of another dimension. That means its true form probably lies in something beyond our physical realm. The human mind will never know what it is. But we all know that its true form 
lies in the other realm. Number 2. Pennywise has many other powers. While you may have guessed that Pennywise isn't a simple being, you probably don't know how deep his bag of tricks is exactly. The following is just a handful of its powers of destruction. Illusions. The monster is a master of illusion, and this should come as no surprise. Pennywise's bag of tricks can make its victims crazy. Some of the illusions it can create are gushing blood, balloons floating towards the wind, frightening noises, dancing photographs, and various smells, such as rot, cotton candy, and popcorn. In other words, it plays on all the senses of its victims. Partial invisibility. Even worse, only the people it chooses to torment can actually sense anything it puts out there. The only way the illusion will disappear is if the victim can force his mind over matter and see through the illusion perfectly. Moreover, unless it chooses to reveal itself, only those who know about it and believe in the monster's existence are able to see it in full. For instance, Beverly and Ben encounter Pennywise in her home and in the public library, respectively. Telepathy. If the monster is close to you, it might be able to read your mind. This is how it is able to shapeshift. It finds your fear and exploits it. The monster is also capable of communicating telepathically with those around him. Regeneration. Yes, it is not invincible. As mentioned, the monster is susceptible to the laws of nature, to which form it takes are susceptible. However, the monster does spontaneously regenerate after it is attacked or harmed. Still, this regenerative ability is unclear and unpredictable throughout the novel. For instance, a giant bird appears to one of the characters, Mike. When Mike attacks it with broken tiles, the bird doesn't stick around and wait to be injured. It flies away instead. But when it shapeshifts into a werewolf, a shot to the head results in instant regeneration. So is this power all-encompassing? Or could it actually be taken down in one of its physical forms? That's for the reader to decide. Brainwashing. The entire town of Derry is brainwashed. At the very least, they pretend to forget the havoc the monster wreaks on their small town. And it has something to do with this. The monster seems to control the minds of those who live in Derry. As Bill of the Losers Club says, any place they go, they won't see it, they won't hear it, they won't know it. Those citizens who are the weakest seem to be the most susceptible to its brainwashing. Plant Slayer Slaying humans isn't enough for it. The creature can also slay plants. Though this power doesn't seem to have a purpose, it does add to its evil. Teleporting while we said that it takes on the natural law of whatever shape it shifts into, the fact is that the essence of it can teleport wherever the hell it wants. The shapeshifter can disappear and reappear across a limited distance, although it doesn't choose to do so frequently. This makes the frightening creature all the more terrifying, as it again exploits the human fear of the unpredictable. Weather The weather seems to follow its lead, during some confrontations between it and the Losers Club, a thunderstorm breaks out. This indicates that it is capable of controlling the weather in and around Derry, as well as the people in it. Telekinesis The monster is able to control inanimate objects as well. It can lock doors, mess with electronic devices, make objects float, fall, and move around in a supernatural way. With all of these powers and more, it's no wonder that it is the ultimate horror super. Number 1. The Turtle is its enemy. The monster's origin takes us back eons to the macroverse in which it was created and lived. This is where it found natural enmity in the turtle. Like Pennywise, the turtle is a regular in other King novels, such as the Dark Tower series. Here, the turtle is given another name, Maturin, a guardian of the beam. The Dark Tower series indicates that both the Turtle and it have been created by an omnipresent source called the Other. The two are sworn enemies in a battle of creation against consumption. If you want to know more about this battle, you'll have to delve into the King novels and decide for yourself what it and the Turtle really are. Are they symbolic of something larger than a sinister sewer-dwelling clown? Knowing King, probably. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in your dreams, and remember, they all float. Thanks for checking out this video. 
be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!